Who must take the passenger transport test? A. All applicants. B. All applicants who are going to drive tankers. C. All applicants who wish to drive a motorcycle. D. All bus driver applicants. Failing to obey a traffic control device at a railroad crossing could result in you losing your CDL for at least if it is your second similar violation within a three-year period. A. 120 days B. 90 days C. 45 days D. 60 days For what offense are you able to bypass a commercial motor vehicle disqualification? A. Committing a felony involving the use of a CMV. B. There are no exemptions. C. Driving a CMV if your blood alcohol concentration is 0.04% or higher. D. Driving a CMV when the CDL is suspended. Drivers should keep the shipping papers of hazardous materials. A. On the driver's seat when the driver is out of the vehicle. B. In clear view within immediate reach while the seat belt is fastened. C. All of the listed answers. D. In the pouch on the driver's door. If you have air brakes, you will need to check. A. Your air pressure gauge. B. Your oil filter. C. Your tires. D. None of the listed answers. To test your vehicle's hydraulic brakes you should pump the brake pedal three times. Then apply firm pressure to the pedal and hold for five seconds. If the pedal moves this indicates. A. There may be a problem but it doesn't need to be fixed immediately. B. The hydraulic brakes are working. C. You are a very good driver. D. There may be a leak or other problem. While driving, the driver of hazardous materials should wear a seat belt and the shipping papers should be A. On the driver's seat all times. B. Safely hidden. C. Within reach at all times. D. In back of the car. Which of the following is a reason brakes fade? A. Bad driving. B. Excessive heat. C. Insufficient heat. D. Cold weather. Generally, how many tie-downs should you aim to have for each 10 feet of cargo? A. 3. B. 5. C. 4. D. 1. 
Typically, containerized loads are used. A. When the freight is carried partway by rail or ship. B. For lighter cargo. C. When there are no other modes of transportation. D. During very cold weather only. When you are transporting cargo, you should inspect your cargo within the first miles. A. 30. B. 25. C. 50. D. 45. A high center of gravity means A. Much of the load's weight is carried high up off the road. B. Much of the load's weight is carried low off the road. C. The vehicle is very heavy. D. None of the listed answers. If you are transporting a load that is over length, over width, or overweight, you may need to A. Special transit permits B. Special equipment i.e. wide load signs and or flashing lights C. Drive and transport your vehicle at specified times of day D. All of the listed answers Bulk packaging is A. Double containers with a capacity of 100 gallons B. Triple containers with each not exceeding a capacity of 25 gallons C. A single container with a capacity of 119 gallons or more of hazardous materials D. A single container with a capacity of 50 gallons. A basic description of a hazardous material will include the identification number, the box number, the proper shipping name and the hazard class. Which one must appear first? A. The identification number. B. The proper shipping name. C. The box number. D. The hazard class or division. What are the shippers of hazardous materials responsible for? A. Packaging the hazardous materials. B. Marking the hazardous materials. C. Labeling the hazardous materials. D. All of the listed answers. The hazard warning label on most hazardous material packages is A. Circle. B. Diamond. C. Rectangle. D. Oval. You will lose your CDL for at least if you have committed three or more violations of an out-of-service order in a 10-year period. A. Two years. B. 120 days. C. One year. D. Three years. If you are driving MPH above the posted speed limit, you are considered to be speeding excessively. A. 10 miles per hour. B. 15 miles per hour. C. 5 miles per hour. D. 3 miles per hour.
When should you conduct an after-trip inspection? A. Daily B. All of the listed answers C. At the end of your tour of duty on each vehicle you operated. D. At the end of the trip. While driving, why should you watch out for bleeding tar? A. It's bad luck to drive over bleeding tar. B. You can get stuck on bleeding tar and cause an accident. C. None of the listed answers. D. Spots where tar bleeds to the surface are very slippery. If you have a cell phone, it's best to call for assistance. A. Only if someone is hurt severely. B. Before you get out of the vehicle. C. As you are driving away from the scene. D. None of the listed answers. What is the minimum number of tidones for a 30-foot load? A. 5 B. 3 C. 8 D. 6 Are required of all drivers applying to take the CDL test. A. Air Brakes Test B. Combination Vehicles Test C. The General Knowledge Test D. Motorcycle Skills Test What is the minimum number of days you can lose your CDL if you have committed your first violation of an out-of-service order? A. 30 days B. 60 days C. 15 days D. 90 days CDL License Practice Test Commercial Driver's License CDL Practice Test 2025 open you up to many top-paying CDL jobs. However, getting these best-paying truck driving jobs, highest-paying CDL jobs and highest-paying trucking companies isn't easy, as some require background checks and or an additional skills test. Most people will ask where there is CDL programs near me. But the free CDL training programs we have here can help you pass the CDL exam and get high CDL salary job. Below is a list of the different CDL truck CDL training that we offer, as well as the accompanying endorsement information. You'll need a commercial driver's license if you want to drive a truck or other commercial vehicle. A Class A license is one of the CDL designations in most jurisdictions. The laws and procedures for obtaining a Class A license vary by state. So, if you're thinking about acquiring a CDL, start by looking into the laws in your area. Now let's go to your question, how can I get my CDL license, where can I get CDL license near me, any free CDL training near me?